The moon is 400 times closer to Earth than the sun, and the sun is 400 times larger than the moon. What does this mean? It means that when the moon comes in between the sun and the Earth, they both seem the same size to us. Hmm. Such that we form a perfect mm. eclipse. Now you might be thinking, yeah, that's standard stuff, mate. Nope. In our solar system, there are approximately 166 moons, and that never happens to any other planet because either the moon seems too big or the sun seems too big. But why is it that only on Earth it's so specific? Hmm. When the universe was created, we had hydrogen and helium gases, but we need carbon for life to exist. But to form carbon, you need three heliums to come together to form carbon. So there's a scientist called Sir Fred Hoyle. Hmm. He wanted to see how these three heliums come together. He noticed that hmm. nothing really was happening when he brought them together. So then it occurred to him that maybe these three heliums will come together at a specific nuclear ground state energy. And it worked. Uh -huh. And he noticed that if it was different by even 1%, hmm. the heliums would not come together. After discovering this, Hoyer later confessed that nothing had shaken his atheism more than this very discovery. Impressive, right? But did you know that the sun and the earth is at a reasonable distance? If it was too close, we would all burn. And if it was too far away, we would freeze. So in this relationship between the earth and the sun, had it changed for even 2%, there would be no life on this planet. It is one of my favorites. As we know, everything is made from atoms. Yeah, but there are two forces that are holding atoms together. You've got the electromagnetic force. This holds the structure of the atom. And then you've got the nuclear strong force. This holds the nucleus of the atom. These two have to be at a specific ratio for life to exist. Now what's the ratio I hear you ask? Well, it's 1 over 10 to the power 16. That's 10 followed by loads of zeros mate. That's all I can say. Now that of course is very, very specific. Now if fine tuning wasn't there, there'd be no stars. If there's no stars, there can be no planets. And if there's no planets, there will be no life. Let's get a bit advanced now. At the dawn of the Big Bang, there was something called dark energy. This force is pushing our universe out there. Now this is so finely tuned that if this force was too much, the universe would have exploded and nothing would have formed. If it was too less, it would have collapsed upon itself and again, nothing would have formed. Now how much is this force? It's 1 over 10 to the power 120. That is very, very specific. So I guess it makes sense when astrophysicist Hugh Ross said that the chance of our planet existing in the universe is so rare that he calculated it to be 1 over 10 to the power 30. That's the chance that a planet like ours could form in the universe. So you see the fine tuning argument guys. It's such a solid proof for the existence of a designer that atheists go to extreme lengths to disprove this. In fact, the best thing that they claim to have come up with is the multiverse theory, which according to the theory is an infinite amount of universes out there, which then means that the chance of a universe or a solar system like ours forming is actually probable. But guys, the multiverse theory is extremely lacking. It's not accepted within academic circles. Hmm. And yes, 
there might be many universes. But we're not asking about many universes, we're asking about this particular universe. I mean, it's just another creative way to delay the existence of God. If you're a reasonable person, it's inevitable for you to start questioning that there has to be a creator. Alright guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to comment and please share it. The more people that watch it, the more we can get the revenue generated and create more such videos. Alright guys, until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.